Hi, I'm Tim Landward from Tightlines Fly Fishing Company, and I'll be your host on today's episode of Midwest Sportsman. Today we're talking about the tackle and some of the techniques that's used for pre-spawn smallmouth. And with me is a Tightlines Fly Fishing Guide, Bart Landwer. Bart, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know pre-spawn tackle, you know that we're using for these river smallmouth. Tell me a little bit about the rods, you know, normal weights that we're using for these fish. Well, uh, day in, day out, Tim, if I had to choose a rod for smallmouth fishing, be it pre-spawn or be it August, okay, I would choose a nine-foot, eight-weight rod. And and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, um, we cast big flies right. to smallmouth. We right. cast exceptionally large flies, and a stout rod with a faster action is going to help you turn that fly over and deliver it to the fish. And number two, you know, oftentimes we're very fortunate we have large smallmouth right. here. We do. And, and we do. It's not fair to the fish to try and fight them with an inferior rod or a lighter rod. Well, we have clients that come a lot of times with five weights, six weights, kind of their mm -hmm. trout tackle. Mm -hmm. It's not big enough to cast a fly, and a lot of times these fish just buckle a seven or an eight weight. Right. As far as a reel, are you looking for anything performance oriented in a reel? You know, I, the reel in smallmouth fishing is not necessarily the most important part. A smallmouth. Well, that's terrible to hear as a fly it, shop owner. I know, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, you know, if you if we were out pursuing steelhead or or a fish that had a more of a torpedo type shape, sure. that they're they're built to run. Right. And they're going to take drag away from you, and they're going to run way downstream. Where a smallmouth, you hook them, and they pretty much push their sleeves up, and they're going to come right to the boat and do a lot of fighting in and around the boat. It's a bulldogger. They're going to come under our boat. Very and... much so, and that doesn't mean they're going to come right to the boat. They're just going to fight around right. it. Um, so a reel isn't necessarily of the utmost importance. You want a good quality reel that's not going to fail you out there. But most of the time, we're going to be stripping some of these fish in. Even if it's a big fish, we might not even operate off the reel. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, as far as lines go... What are you using? Are you using floating lines in pre-spawn? Are you using sinking lines? What are you doing? I use both. Um, if I were to hand you right now a, a floating fly line to go use for smallmouth bass, it would be the Rio Clouser. And you'd use it not just pre-spawn, but all summer? Use it all summer long. And that, it's, it's a bass bug taper that's designed in such a way that it's, it's, it's just tailor-made for these great big flies. It turns okay. them over nicely. It helps you to cast further mm -hmm. with more control. Okay. Um, an exception to that in the pre-spawn because these fish have a, a tendency to be a little, a little bit deeper water and they're a little bit more sluggish, you need to go down to them. I'll use an intermediate line or sometimes a, a, a wet tip fly line. This particular line, this is that Rio makes, it's called the, uh, the streamer tip, I believe. It's a seven foot or seven and a half foot intermediate tip, it sinks mm -hmm. about three inches per second, two yep. and a half inches per second. This is an awesome line. That's a great line. Short yeah. tip, especially for some of the bait fish patterns, which we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. and fish a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So, but but uh, the floating lines, bass bug tapers are important. Mm -hmm. Leaders and tippets, anything we should know about there? Uh, leaders and tippets on my floating my floating line setup. I'm gonna go into a package and I'm gonna take out a nine foot, ten pound bass leader. Okay. Rio's knotless bass leader is a great choice for that. Okay. Uh, they turn flies over very well and they have a very abrasion resistant coating to them, so they they make perfect smallmouth leaders. Okay. Um, Tippets, you know, these fish we're throwing big flies at. They're not necessarily looking at leaders, so you can get away with a little stouter tippet. I like the Maxima series. Okay. 10 pound is pretty much standard for me. 10 pound clear Maxima. It's a little bit bigger diameter than some of your, you know, other tippets that are available on the market, but that does not matter. That that bigger diameter offers a little more abrasion resistance. Fact of the matter, pre-spawn, mid-season, you shouldn't be breaking smallmouth off. No, that you can fight them on very stout tippet. Right. Okay. So yeah, Maximum makes a great leader. And I'll even go heavier. Sometimes I'll be throwing 12 pound on leaders. Okay. Let's take a little look at some of the flies. You know, when we're fishing these particular fish, this is a this is an unusually low water spring. Mm -hmm. We both noticed when we dropped the boats in this morning that, mm -hmm. you know, for first part of May, mm -hmm. there's no water in the river, right? right. Um, so that's going to dictate a lot of how we're going to fish today and how we're going to approach these fish. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if we break these flies into a category, I typically break them into kind of your dredging patterns or your down and dirty deep flies, mm -hmm. uh, an intermediate level pattern like some of the bait fish patterns and then popping bugs. Mm -hmm. You want to show us some of those flies and kind of talk a little bit about those? Sure can. Um, well, one thing I was going to say is when we put the boat in this morning, because the river's a little bit shallower, I would suspect that it's warmed a little bit quicker this right. year. So right. I, I wouldn't think that dredging would be probably something that we're going to spend a lot of time doing today but if we were if it were a normal spring we would definitely start out the day deep right and and flies that are, are a must-have you saw the crayfish in the shallows yeah, this morning they're already active this early so crayfish patterns are, are huge on the smallmouth menu um and i'll fish you know 
first fly I'm probably going to choose is one of your Muppets. Oh, thank you. You know, it's it's an impressionistic crayfish pattern, yellow rubber legs, because bass flies need yellow rubber legs. <laughs> Something about that. Good tip, good tip. Yellow <laughs> and, rubber legs. And, and big, heavy dumbbell eyes. Okay. It'll just drive it down in deep water. And, and this fly can be worked very slowly, and, and it's the material that it's constructed of. The rabbit is very lifelike underwater. So with limited amount of movement, you get a maximum amount of action out of the Got fly. It. Okay. So that's a real good fly to start with. Um, a lot of my deep flies are, are stolen directly from uh, trout streamers I've used out west. You know, autumn splendors and these big rubber-legged woolly bugger patterns. Cone heads, heavily weighted. They're nice impressionistic flies designed to look at like a small, um, a small crayfish or maybe a little bait fish fleen. Mm -hmm. These are really good. And I have a couple of different varieties of those. Big and again, head. the yellow legs tipped me off right away that they'd work for smallmouth. But something that's so key to that particular fly mm -hmm. is that when that fly gets to the river's edge or where we're fishing, it mm -hmm. needs to be down immediately. We don't want to have it wait to get down. It needs to drop no. fast. No, I mean, you want to get down to where the fish are at and not waste a bunch of time getting there. Got it. So you can hit a lot of spots. Another thing I want to talk about, this is one of your flies in black. Uh -huh. and, and a lot of people, I think, make a mistake when the, the water as oftentimes in the, in the spring, it'll, it'll fluctuate a lot. It'll mm -hmm. go up and it'll come down. And, and when they, they get a big rain, it, it tends to muddy the water. It's a real off color. And color choice can make or break your day. And, and I know way too many people that go out on a day when the water's a little off color and it's overcast and they want to fish a big, bright chartreuse colored fly because they think the fish will see it better. And that couldn't be further from the truth. When the water's dark and the sky's dark, you want to fish a black fly or a dark brown fly, something that casts a silhouette that's able to be seen by the fish. Yep. So, you know, vary your colors. On a brighter day, you can get away with a lighter fly. When it's dark and dirty outside, you want to use a dark colored fly. As far as intermediate patterns and just kind of looking at the scenario, how things are kind of cracking out today, I'd have to say that that intermediate pattern may be our choice uh, of today. Let's mm -hmm. talk about those intermediate flies. Mm -hmm. Well, the two that I probably go to the quickest in my boat are going to be Bill Murdich's minnow. Uh -huh. Murdich minnow, designed initially for stripers and saltwater, and just has become an awesome smallmouth fly. Unweighted, it, it, when it's soaked down, it's gonna go about three, four inches down, and it, it just moves so erratically and so flashy through the water, and the you can fish see it. can't resist it, and you see every take. Yeah, so I love stuff. that guy. Um, a minnow, a little minnow I came up with, that I think we call the Barto <laughs> minnow. Huh? That fly, just to give you props on that fly, that fly has caught more big smallmouth for our guides at the shop than probably any other bait fish pattern that you're going to show. Well, thank you. I, I have no idea who you stole that from. <laughs> but it definitely works. And, and the one thing that these flies do is they offer a huge, you know, silhouette to the fish. It's a big piece of meat mm -hmm. and they're easy to cast. They shed water pretty quickly. And these fish are coming off of being cold in winter hibernating. Right. So they're, they're looking for meat. They're, they're p packing on pounds for right. the spawn. Well, and the nice thing is if you're fishing a slack water section, you can fish these slow and they're not gonna go down and snag the bottom. They're gonna stay in that intermediate level and you're gonna bring the fish up to them yeah. because it doesn't look like it's too hard to catch. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now poppers. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think, or a lot of, a lot of people wouldn't think that this time of the year would be a popper time, is it? Without question. Without question. In fact, in the store, you know, the other guides and I always have a race to see who can get the first popper fish of the year. And you got yours yesterday. I got mine yesterday, and I know it's the first for the shop, so I won this year. <laughs> but poppers, yeah, when the fish push up shallow and you're getting them on these intermediate flies, as soon as the fly hits the water, fish is grabbing it, I'm ready to put a popper on because they're coming to the surface for a pattern. Um, poppers, you know, the most common ones that we use around the store are the classic, classic old deer hair popper, you mm -hmm. know, and they are so pretty and, and the, the history behind these flies is just so neat and the time it takes to tie one, that yeah. they're, they're worth using. Yep. Some people say they're a little softer, the fish hang on to them better. I don't know if I necessarily buy that. The one problem I have with those is those pike that are this long, like the deer hair popper yeah, they as take well that as the It's, it's a lot of time on a vice <laughs> or it costs a it's lot a of money to fly cast. bin. You bet. So, so these are very effective. What I find myself using more often are just the old hard-headed poppers yep. uh, with a, a cork body or a plastic body. They're painted up. They, they pop awesome on the surface. And if you do lose one to that little hammer handle, you're not as heartbroken. Right. But right. Uh, they're, they're a great fly. They're super durable. Absolutely. It's a great fly. But all of these, a smallmouth fisherman, whether it's pre-spawn or midsummer, mm -hmm. this is all stuff we need to have in our arsenal. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'd like to do now is let's go out and fish some of these flies, show you some tips and show you some tactics on how these all work from the top to the middle right down to the bottom. Let's go to the rear, maybe catch some fish.